Hello. Um, how's it going, guys? Everyone, uh, good to see you. It's Sunday. It's chill maths. We've got some new colour scheme going. <laughs> we got some, got some maths going. Hi, people in chat. I can see Herb and uh, Toast Potatoes and Fieldsy. You'll remember from uh, <laughs> Fieldsy joined in for a lot of the Quintic Quest. Uh, Toast Potatoes, which Robert docked for a bit as well. I know Herb dropped in too. So good to see people. Glad you're doing well. Yeah. So the attempt at um, I'm doing all right. I'm trying to get to um, I'm trying to get to Twitch affiliate, which is the sort of silly extra thing I can do, provided I meet certain Twitch numbers. You might have heard about this if if you've ever seen a Twitch streamer just look directly into the camera and being like, Twitch is changing and it's really tough. And they're, they're talking about how it's really tough chasing sub goals and things. You've got to keep going. But yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all sorts of rules. Um, all sorts of things. Uh, one is about uh, concurrent viewers, which, and that's an average one. <laughs> There's also concurrent chatters. Oh, I don't know. But anyway, I got about 90% of the way there by mistake while talking about quintic equations. So I figured if I just do a couple of like chill Sundays, yeah, 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 and with no stress, chill is the word on the screen, right? But chill. And they're talking about the map. <laughs> they're not talking to me. They're talking to me. You, you get to talk to each other. That counts for my stats. <laughs> all, all counts. Uh, yeah, let's go about Matt as well. So we're going to try and chill and not not talk about Matt. Um, we've done a lot of prep. If you're if you're here from the Matt live stream, which is part of my day job, then you've done a lot of prep. You've done a lot of stuff, and you've done a lot of maths questions. Uh, I thought today we'd do a different maths question. Excuse me. Uh, so I thought I'd just I'd show you something that I've been working on. I'm really proud of it. I think it's a really cool maths question that demonstrates something actually good. So I'm going to give chat a little moment to get together and then, um, you know, work out how Twitch works. And then I, I really want to show you some maths, this maths idea. Um, it's like a, it's like a maths, it's like a maths problem. Uh, that is is not Matt, and it is also not A level, um, but it's kind of doable. It's kind of doable, uh, and it links to a cool method. Uh, and there's a proof to do with for free as a result of this maths. Um, you get you get a fact about tanch one, um, which we're going to try and work out along there. Oh yeah 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 yeah, you're completely useless. Yeah, so let's just ignore all the other stuff that's going on in Twitch, <laughs> in maths in the world. Um, let's have a go at this. Okay, uh, we're going to give chat uh, just a moment. I saw new people joining. If you're joining, hi, welcome to a bit of a weird idea on Twitch. Um, I like math so much that I do some of the weekends sometimes, so I'm going to try and do some of this. Uh, wait, how does Herb know that it's going to involve hyperbolic? How did you know? <laughs> how do you know it's going to have hyperbolic stuff in it? I'm going to get in there. Oh yeah, because I just said tanch. There we go. I'm an idiot. Hey chat. <laughs> tanch. How do people say this one? I say tanch, like tanch. We'll learn what that is later on. Tanch dressing. Uh, fan. Oh yeah, some people do say fan as well, but that's the end because of shine, which I suppose you're then supposed to say. Do they say fan? Yeah, okay. But then the controversial one is if you continue that, you should you should say chos, um, and nobody says chos for that one to kind of move the h around. Uh, sometimes I've been known to say chos just to try and prove a point. Not really how it works. Good. Okay, here's the maths problem. Um, so uh, it it starts with a pretty scary definition, uh, but it works like this: given a function y of x, we could work out. And then this thing's going to have a name, which I'll show you in a second. But we could work out the integral from minus 1 to 1 of y of x 
squared plus y prime x squared dx. Um, and I'm going to call that, so this is an integral to do with y, you give me y, and okay, oh, chill, but like, chill, but like, you know, um, this should be differentiable so that you can work out do y by dx over here, and you should be able to integrate the square of it or something, but we'll chill, chill like a smooth function, like a nice function, let's not worry too much about what it is. Our toast potatoes does not like y of x. <laughs> it's a shame. Um, I'm going to call this i of y, which looks a bit scary because y is itself a function. And this is i for integral. Let's label this a little bit. i for integral. Does that show up? Oh, that shows up in grey. That's. Oh, that turns to blue. Good. i for integral. Um, and it sort of measures how much the, the value of y is involved in here and the derivative of y is involved in here. Um, so it's trying to it's trying to work out something to do with the value and something to do with the derivative. Um, okay. Here's the here's the maths question, which we're gonna try and tackle over the next I don't know, hour or so or something. Um, among all smooth functions, function e, it's a chill stream, but I should still try and spell. Um, among all smooth functions, y of x with y of 1 equals 1, y of minus 1 equals 1, which function has the smallest i of y? You know, if there is such a function that minimizes it, and if you bear in mind all these caveats about like smoothness and stuff, chill stream. Yeah, all right. Okay, so so the function, a thing to imagine here is that the function uh, has some value up here at minus one, it has value one, and has some value over here, it has some value at one. And then in between, it's supposed to come, well, I suppose. To, to minimize i, we want to make sure that the value is not too big. Don't like value. I'm scared of heights, I guess. Um, if I want to try and minimize i, I should, I should not make y too big. Um, I don't make y too big. Um, and I'm also scared of slopes. Um, so you might want something that sort of comes down a bit and goes up, like this maybe. Um, or you might want something that comes down quite a lot and comes back up again. Um, but what you don't want is something that goes up, because that's got very large y. Uh, and you don't want something that wobbles around a lot, because that will have uh, that one will have large. I like maybe instead of x, which is a bit confusing, I should put like sad face, sad face for large a prime. So you kind of don't want something too wiggly, um, not too. High, not too steep. And those things are kind of in contradiction. They're kind of, kind of against each other. Um, kind of against each other because um, if you just keep it up here, then it'll be quite high. And if you bring it down, then it'll be quite steep. This one is quite steep. So the, maybe there's some sort of minimum in between. Right, let's read chat. Um, yeah, y of x is minus one. Well, that won't won't do these things. You mean y of x equals just one? It's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all squared. It's all squared. <laughs> okay, and it doesn't need to be one at both endpoints. Um, this is quite abstract maths at the moment. You can imagine, um, you can imagine that this is something like um, trying to minimize the energy of something. If you like quantum mechanics, it's kind of how quantum mechanics works. Um, not with this exact question, but you can imagine something quantumish kind of going on in here. Um, so let's put um, toast potatoes suggestion in. Um, toast potatoes would like to try, and we're going to try a few functions, I think. Um, try, uh, and you've said try x to the n with n even, and you've also said really large, but I can do the maths even if it's not a very large number. Let me just scroll so we can see it. There we go. Okay. Um, 
So if I try x to the n, then i of y, if this is y, will be x to the 2n here because it gets squared. And over here, oh, I've got to do a derivative squared dx. Which is not too bad, right? We can do this. We could even like choose the best value of n having having tried something like this. Okay, so let's go. Chill stream, but I've still got to be able to integrate. <laughs> Maybe I have a weird idea about what a chill stream is. Maths, you know. Um, yeah, this is quite cute. So this is this screen has now got enough stuff on it to sort of show. If you've just joined, you can see we're trying to do a kind of chill maths problem. Okay, I think I should probably actually integrate this rather than just not integrating it. Uh, ah, what is this? n squared over... But there's also an n... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is n squared x to the 2n minus 2. So when it gets integrated, it'll be x to the 2n minus 1 over 2n minus 1. 1 minus 1. Uh, which is... These ones are going to be quite nice, aren't they? 2 over 2n plus 1 plus, and there's some n squared term over here. 2n minus 1 is odd, so these do both work. Okay, quite like that. Um, suppose you want to choose a value of n that minimizes that or maximizes that. Hello, e is better than pi. <laughs> That's a very good username. I see. I think this stream tends to attract people who have got very good mathsy usernames. So there you go. Is e better than pi? E's certainly smaller than pi. <laughs> so that's good stuff. N squared? Yeah, we've got an n squared around. So for toast potato suggestion, it's kind of interesting because. Um, if you make n very large, this first term will be tiny, kind of because the, the x to the n shape whoop, doesn't have very much value, it kind of is roughly zero all the way through. Um, but then this other term that, that punishes you for having lots of derivative, this term really does not like the steep bits at the edges. Um, and there's always a balance for, for this question that we're going to try and do. And there's always a balance between Value, you've got to have some value because you've got to be one at the end points. Um, versus derivative, that's kind of weird. Uh, oh, E is better than five. Made this account for this stream. You're very welcome. Welcome to this. Welcome to Twitch. Um, <laughs> uh, from what I understand, Twitch is just like all, all like this. So I, I reckon you can you can turn up in any chat. And um, we're doing a maths question. Um, it's chill. Let me go back up to the top. It's a chill maths question, in a way. Um, in that it's not math, it's not A level, it's not relevant. No one, no one needs to know this. Um, it's kind of doable. We're gonna, we're gonna do it over the next hour and a half, or whatever. Um, it looks to a, it looks to a cool method that you might learn at university if you came and did maths at university. Um, and as you get, you get to prove something to do with tan. I, I've promised that tan one is gonna turn up. Yeah. Okay. So the calculation I want to do is, in fact, I think I want to put in like n equals two over here. Um, just to get a kind of concrete value to say if you just use a parabola that will go through one and minus they'll go through one over here one over here because x squared is nice and symmetric feels like we should be checking symmetric functions I'm not sure why maybe let me know in chat if you think about this um what you think about using symmetric functions it kind of feels right um anyway if i put in n equals, n equals two then i get two over five plus what is this, 8 over 3, which is kind of weird. Uh, I'll roll with it though, so this would be 46 over 15. So right, isn't it, it's worth 3 and a bit. Okay, uh, we would try some, try some other functions. Um, let's try y equals 1, so just like straight line. So this thing, there, there are two terms here. One that works out where you work out y squared, and one where you work out the derivative of y and square it. In this case, the derivative is zero. So you see, I've put all my eggs in one basket, basket with this function. Um, I've made the value fine, uh, and I've made the sorry, I've made the derivative zero. That'll be one, which is pretty good actually. Or is it two? Now that I think about it, I 
think it's the number two. So that's, that's not too bad. Um, it's a little bit better than this parabola. And it's not obvious if I changed n to four or six or something, this might get super large. Yeah, e's and pi's, e to the x and stuff. Mm, okay, okay. Um, so maybe it's somewhere in between that we should look. Um, we drew some pictures up here of things we might like to try not too wiggly because they'll have lots of derivative that we squared. Um, and not too high up. So move somewhere in between. I'm going to read this toast potatoes comment in chat. If you don't use an even function, then one or other of those is bigger than the other. Yeah, do some sort of reflective thing. Uh, yeah, I guess I worry that technically you might end up with something which is now not. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, sure. Maybe do a little bit of smoothing on it or something. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of smoothing on the on the join. There might be a kind of join where you did your reflection at the origin. A bit of smoothing might fix that thing. Chill stream. We don't worry about the details. I think we're trying to invent the other aim of this stream is we're trying to invent chill maths. We're trying to work out what that is. So you, you sort of don't try too hard. Um, speaking of which, I'm not going to try. I kind of want to do a parabola that's a verse up high was okay. Parabola that kind of comes down a bit feels pretty good to me. Someone's got to like balance in between. So what a parabola, parabola. Maybe a chill stream just means I'm even worse at spelling than normal. Maybe that's what this is. Spelling test. One, two, three, four. Ha. Huh. There are four people in chat. That's the most people I've ever seen in chat at once. Ever. <laughs> On a math stream. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try a parabola that comes down just a little bit. Um, I think I wanna do this like, oh gosh. I wanna make this not too horrible, right? This is like AX squared plus B. Keep it, keep it symmetric. <laughs> and I still want it to go through one, one. So I want A plus B to be one. Uh, and I don't want to, don't, I don't know what to do with the other number. So I guess I'm going to call it, don't know what to do with the other number. I think I've got a free parameter to change like how much up and down it is. A little Desmos thing might be handy at some point here. Okay, so maybe I take A to B, a B to B, a 1 minus A or something. Yeah, that looks nice. I'm going to try this parameter. It's got a free, free kind of, uh, I don't know what A is. Hi, if you've just joined us. Um, we've got a challenge, which so far we, we don't have a solution to, which is um, I've got a machine here which takes a function y uh, and calculates a number. It evaluates for you how kind of scary your function is. Um, it's scared of two things. The integral is uh, punishes you for having value that it's scared of heights um, and also it punishes you for derivative. It's scared of slopes. So we're looking for a function that tries to, tries to minimize this by not being too high up but also not being too steep. Somewhere in between. It's kind of non-trivial, non-trivial problem because it's the balance, the balance between those two effects. I really like things which are like the balance of two different effects. Okay, um, we've tried a couple of functions to see what's going on, um, and I'm going to try something in between. So a equals zero, we've already seen. We got one. Um, a equals one was a function that Toast Potatoes picked in chat. Um, we've seen that. I believe it was forty-six over fifteen, but you know, weird things have happened. Um, what I want to do, I think, is just try with a general A inside to see what happens. Yeah, I think I want to do that. So I'd have y squared is, oh my goodness. Mm -mm 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 -mm. When did this, let's write this out again. 1 minus A plus AX squared. So y squared will be A squared X to the 4 plus, sort of, it gets much harder to test functions or try different things as they get more complicated because, oh my goodness, look at all this. So y prime is 2ax, so y prime squared will be 4a squared x squared. So there's, 
there's this term which punishes us for having some derivative, which is something to do with a, because the more a there is, the more derivative there is. Yeah, so work equals zero is pretty good because it is flat and flat and low down. Yeah, and Herb's, Herb's, got, a, Herb's got a point that extra twist. Um, the function is kind of pinned at these two points up here, um, away from zero, which feels almost unfair. It's kind of forcing you to be have have some value and then to move anywhere. Hey, thanks for this up. Or follow. What, what was that? <laughs> I don't understand Twitch. Two seconds. That was a follow from SLM leg. Thanks, SLM leg. Um, feel, free, feel free to say hi in chat as well if you like. Uh, if anybody's watching because they've just joined and they've got no idea what's going on. Hey, just chill. Just uh, try and find something like an in-between kind of function. Um, we're about to do some integration, which is why I'm stalling for type. Uh, yeah, no, I think I've got to go and do the integral. I think that's what it's. I think that's what it's come to. Yeah. Hey, hey, Slam. Is it an L? I, I I went through this big phase of uh, during the middle of the quintet when I was getting quite tired. Somebody subscribed with like an I and an L and a mix of I's and L's, and I just couldn't read their name at all. Uh, so I've le I've learned not to bother, not not to try. <laughs> um, right. Okay. I seem to have got myself into a position where I am attempting to integrate on the internet something that I just shouldn't try to do. <laughs> it's advertised as a chill stream. What have I done? So there's 2a here and minus 2a squared, but I'm going to add on a 2a squared. So I think I'm going to do this. That's my x squared coefficient. So I've added all these things together. And there might be a little bit of trust me going on here. What do we think? This will be all right, really. This is going to be a quadratic. Time to do some incredible multiplication. Uh, four because of the extra factor of two. I am maybe going to get to this, try and do this too fast, but I've got a safety net. I can check these values at the end. Okay. Um, check some values. If A is zero, then we get zero, zero, and two. So I've messed something up. Oh, yep, yeah, we saw the value was two. I've messed up my messed, messed up my safety check. Yeah, do I want to throw this tool from Alpha? That's a pretty good idea. Uh, how about I get someone at home to <laughs> someone at home to wolf apply the wolf. I reckon I can do this. I reckon this is within my powers. Even if it is chill Sunday afternoon. Uh, a equals zero matches up with what I was expecting. A equals one matches up. Hello. Oh my goodness, that's the best username. Put that in chat. That is great. It would only be better if you had like a typo in it to get me. Oh, that was brilliant. Did everyone see that? Oh. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Right. Um, I'm honoured to have got subscribed by. Oh, but he is better than Pi is in chat as well. <laughs> And someone else with a pie themed username. I'm worried this is going to descend into like tribes of people who are like pie based usernames. Herb, your username starts with an E. You better better pick a side quick before. Anyway, um, chill. We're chill. It's a chill stream. We're all going to be all going to be friends here. <laughs> what on earth am I doing? <laughs> I was going to check that when I put in A equals one, I do get forty six over fifteen, which looks more and more unlikely the more I look at it. But you know. Seems to be my life right now. I remember that sum from before. Uh, yeah, that's 6 and 40, 46 over 15. We're good. Okay. This looks vaguely consistent. 2.718281828459452. Uh, you're not allowed decimal points in usernames. Oh, that's why they've had to put underscore, underscore, underscore at the end rather than dot, dot, dot. Twitch, please. <laughs> Well, you, I'm sure you can't do anything bad with decimal points in your name, right? I imagine. Oh, I hope. Does anyone know why you're not allowed? Gonna, oh, because of links. Anyway. Right. Is that an explanation? I don't really understand, but I'm going to carry on not understanding. Oh, uh, ooh. Right, okay. So we have a new task. 
if you've just joined us, we're trying to do a big problem where we minimize something. We make something as small as possible. Um, new task for a particular group of these uh, functions, we tried, I have minor regrets, but we tried this parabola that goes down a bit and up again. And that involved A. And we did lots of calculations. We have a new task. Um, choose A to minimize this. Which, you know, that's a quadratic. So, is it a happy quadratic at least? Yeah, it's a happy quadratic. It goes down and up again. So I reckon we can probably do this, you know? Let's multiply it through by 15, just to, you know, just to try pummeling it. Uh, or 15 times this. I don't want to have fractions if I don't, I just don't want to have fractions at all. Uh, so it's 20a plus 20a squared. I'm going to multiply out that bracket as well. 15 over here, so it gives me 30 minus 60a plus 30a squared. Um, you see, well, isn't that nice? You multiply it by 15 and it gets rid of all the fractions. you just got to remember to put the 30 in and do the multiplication out along the way. 30, 15, so 5s, 20s. Yeah, I just prefer whole numbers. It doesn't change the maths at all, right? 50, so this is 56a squared. Minus 40a, and if I didn't have regrets before, I think I have regrets now. Plus 30? Yeah, is there just a 30 on that one? Quick check, uh, if I put in 1 again, then I see 16, 46, which would make sense. And if I put in 0, I get 30, which makes sense. So I don't think I'm in trouble yet. Uh, I guess I should complete the square or something, or differentiate. So this has a minimum when 112. I think I'm probably losing video viewers by doing it like this, but you know, well, never mind. <laughs> uh, a is 112 divided by 40. Feels like that simplifies. Feels like that simplifies due to factors of 4. 28 over factors of 8? No, that's greedy. I'm willing to give it a go. Oh, it's like 2.8. Wow. Thanks, Google. Can you give me that as a... No, I'll, I'll do the last bit on my own. 2.8 over 10. No. It's a chill stream, but I should probably still get things right. 14 over 5? Maybe? Help chat, help. Uh, wait, actually, matter how select is I, opposite side. Yeah, opposite side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't cancel it because they both get squared. <laughs> the squares are in there to try and prevent that sort of trick. I, I like your way of thinking that hey, maybe we'll just balance it out all out overall. Um, but the squares make sure that slopes get punished. They're never they're never helping to minimise this. They're always bad. Um, the squares also mean that we're doing loads of stuff. Uh, what is the value there? Hmm, now I really regret this because I'm about to try and plug this in, aren't I? <laughs> I want to see if the value is a little bit better. So this says that you should set A to be not quite 3. Wait, 2.8, it's pretty close to E. So, uh, I really do think I should consider putting this in Desmos. 2.8 times x squared minus 1. That's kind of nice. Let's Desmos it. Uh, I should also show you Desmos, right? If I'm going to use Desmos. Let me work, it, work that out in a second. Okay, I'm just going to go through 1, 1, and it's going to go through minus 1, 1. Cool, okay. This doesn't feel right. Feel right at all. It's huge. Something's gone wrong. Chat will point out my error. Something is wrong, isn't it? Oh, it's the reciprocal of that. <laughs> I haven't solved the equation. I haven't solved. So I'm supposed to solve this equation, and I write down this. So 
something is very wrong. A fraction somewhere is upside down. Okay, I'm ready to show you a Desmos. How do I do that? I do that like this. Cut. Desmos. Good old Desmos. Um, so there it is. We tried previously this thing, which had the purple curve's got less value, but more derivative. And then we tried putting in uh, this thing with like an A in there, between A between one and one. And that kind of tries out, if we tried out these different values of how much balance between high values or high derivatives we had. Let's put that. This between those things. There we go, that's nice. Do you want it lots of high value? We found that that had the integral gave us two, whereas down here it gave us actually a worse value, like three and a bit. But then we found that in between at five over 14, three, five, there's some kind of nice balance um, between, between the two. Okay, um, good, back in. Chat doing all right? Yeah, we flipped a fraction over and that thing's got better. Sometimes it's the stupidest step where you make the, make the mistakes. Do I have any chance of evaluating this at five over 14? I kind of want to. Let's find out. Yeah, it's a Sunday, I've got ages. I can work this out at five over 14. So the word regret is bandied around quite a lot these days, but what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? I'm divide that by 15 afterwards. So the value of this, and I'm hoping this is somewhere a bit less than two. Uh, hi, Elrude. We've got a maths problem, which we're messing around with. The setting is not too hard to explain. Um, if you give me any function y, which has y of one is one, y of minus one is one. So it has to go through these two points. I can go and work out the value of the integral y squared plus y prime squared, which has got some value because of y and it's got some value because of the derivative of y. Each of these terms is squared so that negative values of the derivative get, get kind of contribute as well. Um, this integral always is always positive. Um, Partly because of the squares, right? And partly because it has to have some value because I've made you pick one as the value is over here. You kind of don't really want to do that. You want to make the value nice and small if you're trying to minimize this. Um, so we want the small, we're looking for a function with a really small i of y. Um, we talked a bit about how we don't want it too wiggly. We don't want it too high up. We want something in between. Um, we've tried some parabolas. Just finishing off some algebra that's got a little bit too hard for me. Um, to <laughs> work out a little bit too hard for me to work out what the what kind of value is if you pick the perfect parabola. This is not perfect. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a, there's going to be a kind of it's got these sum of sums of squares in, which is pretty nice. Um, okay, so let's try simplifying this. So one of these 14s will cancel with the factor of 14 that's hiding in there because 56 is 14 times four. So this is gonna be four times five squared over 14. Take away 200 over 14 plus, well, there's just a big plus two over here. And this term is over 15. Five squared is 25 times four is 100. So this is gonna be minus 100 over 14 over 15. Uh, we can do some cancellation here. So this is two take away 100 over 14 times 15, but we can cancel a bit because we can pull out a factor of five and we can pull out a factor of two. So this is two take away 10 sevenths, which is uh, tiny. Makes me think I've done it wrong. <laughs> Again, uh, and a three, tw t 10, 21. Two take away 10 over 21. That looks nicer. Uh, so, a bit smaller than two, which is what I was hoping for. 
uh, but not that small. What is that? 42 over 21, 32 over 21. So this is our new best. What's our best? Yeah, Elrude. Uh, I've seen catenaries. So there's this classic problem. This is not the classic problem, but I'm hoping to get towards the classic problem. There's this classic problem where you um, work out the shape of a hanging chain. So a hanging chain, maybe it's fixed at two points. Fixed at two points. Uh, and it's trying to minimise energy. Now, the, the formula for how you minimise energy is a little bit more complicated. Um, but... but uh, this is supposed this this exercise that we're doing is supposed to be foreshadowing for that. Should we do a stretched cosh? Let's try a stretched cosh. There's two people in chat suggesting hyperbolics, so I'm going to do a stretched cosh. I need it to go through. Uh, I need it to go through one one. How am I going to do that? Uh, toast potatoes. Uh, I'm going to insist that your function is differentiable. It has a derivative everywhere. Um, I'm a bit worried about. Wait, wait, so maybe I could let you go. I tried to say something kind of awkward earlier about trying to smooth this bit out, um, which I think is all right. If you smooth it out over some really small range, then this is all right. I'll kind of have. Um... We get some contribution from here, right? Where y prime is like one, and y is like x. So over just for this range, even if I let you have a spike there, then you'll get something like x squared plus one dx. So you get one third plus one, which is four thirds. So your overall contribution is eight thirds, which is actually a little bit bigger than two, I think. I'm a bit worried about the spike. <laughs> Maybe I should. It's a good guess, actually. It's a good, good attempt. What are we doing with this? Uh, cosh is bigger than or equal to 1, so we could translate it. Um, I've just saw, so the thing that's making me like, nervous that we're not chill, is I just did some translation. I translated a parabola up and down, kind of, or did this kind of stretch and translate. Um, and that produced so many terms to integrate. Uh, so I think it's probably an easier way to make this go through one. Let me show you. Uh, if you divide it by cosh one, that goes through. That goes through cosh one. That goes through one one. You plug in one, it gives you one, mate. Plug in minus one. Hello, Alistair Bishop. Wait, what does the logo on your username mean? Good luck, have fun, and pledge. Cool. Uh, I will look that up afterwards. <laughs> What's up there as well? Uh, can someone in chat, maybe Alistair or someone, can anyone just get badges? Can we do badges? Is that a thing? Or is this like, is Alistair like some sort of celebrity or something? If so, hi Alistair, welcome to the channel. No, <laughs> okay. Um, we are trying to do some maths where we're trying to minimise a particular integral. I'm going to say it one more time. I think this is good for me. It forces me to keep revisiting the problem. Um, for any function y between minus 1 and 1, we can define this integral, where we square y, we also square its derivative, add them together, and integrate. Uh, and this i is quite picky here. It, it doesn't like seeing too much value of y, and it doesn't like, doesn't like, um, uh, doesn't like too much derivative. So you want something that's not too wiggly, not too high, and kind of balances between the two. Um, chat has just asked me to try some hyperbolic functions um, because uh, we've seen we've seen uh, these squares and some of two squares, and we figure that trying cosh might be nice. Uh, it does the thing we want. Oh, by the way, the function's got to go through one one and minus one one. Um, over years ago, okay. Pledging you wouldn't be mean in video games. There you go. Alistair, the only person in chat who's not me. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, let's give this a go. So you're going to get an example of the sort of calculations that we do here, uh, because I'm going to try plugging in this function. I am thinking about calling this. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to say A for the, the kind of cheeky prefactor I put on to make sure it went through that point. Uh, okay, here we go. So this will be a squared cosh squared plus a squared shine squared because the derivative of cosh is shine uh, integral from minus one to one, which will be 
Uh, can I integrate cos squared and sine squared? I think I probably can. Um, yeah, I think I know a rule about cos squared and sine squared. Um, chat's going to tell me though. There's a way to add together cos squared and sine squared, isn't there? What do you get? Non interactive live stream. Already chat interaction. Oh, we got, we got a few viewers. That's quite nice. Maybe someone in chat can tell me how to add together cos squared and sine squared. Yeah, if there was a minus sign there, then I would say one. <laughs> Maybe this is good. Maybe this helps me. Is it cos two or something? I think I used to know these just off by heart all the time. I think it's just cos two x. But I might need to go and look that up. See, this is good for me. I'm also remembering. Cos squared and sine squared. Did I get away with it? Yeah. I think there's this rule, but it might be this. Of course. There's like a version of the double angle formula, but for hyperbolic functions, which is called like extra minor signs or lack of minor signs. So he is not pi. That's the sort of thing I want. wanted. Um, maybe we need a kind of side note here about doing these integrals or something. I mean, in some sense, we could just do the squares, right? <laughs> so, cos squared is equal to one quarter of e to the 2x plus 1 plus 2 plus e to the minus 2x, right? Because of how cos is defined. And shine squared x will be one quarter. Shine's just kind of the same, but with a minus sign in it in the cross term, so once you've squared, so it's kind of these, so the sum of them together is these terms interact. Oh yeah, it is cos 2. Okay, well maybe I want to leave it like this anyway, so it's kind of nice. Hey, we did get there. Hey, I've got the button as well. There you go. We see got sort of before and after it, before and after. I can't believe people are taking some sort of pledge. This is like a weird kind of Twitch, Twitch thing. Alistair, look what you've done. <laughs> um, okay, we want to integrate that function. I'm going to keep integrating. You, 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 you'll do your, do your. Um, I don't know what what tests do they make you do to prove that you're nice or something. <laughs> do some pledge to be good in games. Oh, I don't know. Chat, what you like. This line is like for sure. I added them myself. Uh, I'm just going to keep. I'm just going to keep it integrating. I think this is very sad. I used to be much faster at this sort of thing and more accurate. He says, making an error. Ah, <sighs> what's that? What is that? We're trying not to talk about that too much. We're trying to do like integrating e to the x instead, which was something that ominously someone asked me about in my day job recently. I don't know why. I've, why have I paused so much here? What's scaring me? I thought I would plug in the numbers wrong. Just go for it. Great big attempt. Minus minus e to they get another one off there, and you get another one there. Good. I think I've got it. So what? What is that? On earth is that? It's like cosh two or something. Groovy. Let me go to a calculator to work out what that is. Um, I think I've got the numbers. I think I've got my numbers there. Two or three. And it's a bit small. A bit unrealistically small. Yeah, I think I think this thing is I think there was a cosh two X thing that I put, but Chad didn't seem that happy, so 
just went for it. And maybe if I was integrating, if I'd been allowed to do this thing up to cost 2x, people seem kind of unhappy about the um, about the uh, addition of cost squared and shine squares, like the double angle formula. In if you go that way, then you can call it shine 2x between 1 and minus 1. That's odd function, so that's shine 2 over 2, which is what this is. Oh, it's shine 2. There we go. Good way of discovering your own mistakes. So just read them out. Read your own work. See what happens. And that's got a value that's really small. I'm very suspicious. I think I might have missed a factor of two. I'm gonna do a little bit more wall crawling. To play cosh two x from minus one to one. Just trying to integrate chat. Yeah, checking on Wolfram Alpha. Not really. Not really the done thing, is it? Shine of two. Oh, I've got an extra factor of two missing somewhere. What did I do? What did I do? I've lost a factor of two. Wolfram Alpha agrees with me, except for a factor of two. Ah, that, that, there it is. It was the last step where I just tried to convert it. I should have, I should have remembered that shine includes a factor of two. So it's this. Shine two over cos squared one. Which simplifies a little bit. But I think I've now got the correct value. <laughs> okay. We do, we do our best. We do our best. We got shine. Still checking that it's a realistic answer. Sanity check, sanity check, sanity check, 1.5. So this is about 1.5. And the thing we had before up here is about 1.5. So it's not actually obvious which one of those is better. 1.5 is pretty good. And before, when we had that original parabola, we got a value of two. Um, now we've put in this um, weird hyperbolic function. We've got a value that's about 1.5. Um, not actually obvious if this is better than that one or not. Um, but here's where I switch modes. Um, because actually I know, I happen to know that this is the best that we can do. Um, this is the right answer to the question. This is the minimum amount of everything. Um, and I'm switching modes because what I want to show you is a proof that that's the best. So we're now going to do something slightly different to the exploration. Good exploration. We've, we've, we've met the right function. Well done, chat. It really was hyperbolics all along. Uh, will this let me do a new page? No. And then there are some squares that I drew before. And then more squares. That's fine. Um, OK. So here's the, here's the mode, mode switch proof time. Um, so among all smooth functions y, y of x, with y of one equals one, y of minus one equals one. The one which minimizes integral minus one, y squared, y of x squared plus y prime x squared dx is y equals cosh x over cosh one. The one we just tried, cosh x over cosh one. I'm gonna write that out more tidily because more tidy because I think that's important. <laughs> oh yeah, we don't want to have to talk about Oxford, amazing. <laughs> um, good answer. Right, okay, proof. Um, write y of x, and this is a, a good sort of trick that you could remember to steal for other stuff. Uh, with f of x, um, some smooth function with f of 1 is 0, f of minus 1 is 0. Um, if you've got some like nice, smooth, pretty function, um, then hey, why don't you write it as the kind of thing we want it to be, plus something else. And our aim is going to be to try and prove that f is, f is 0. Um, it is an even function. It was quite shaky because I was so excited to be writing it. Um, okay, so take this thing and add on 
Now, is equal to, now in here, I've got, and I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to write a for 1 over cosh 1 again because I'm getting irritated about writing that factor out. Um, the integral for i of y is going to be, when you just work out this term in here, you get a cosh plus f squared. And when you work out the derivative, you get a shine x plus the derivative of f squared dx. Okay. Um, which is... Um, a squared cosh squared plus a squared shine squared which we did before it's nothing to do with f that's the it's kind of first terms from the squares you get f squared and you get f prime squared and you get 2a cosh x f plus 2a shine x f prime You've got to integrate all of that with respect to x. So it's looking pretty bad. Um, but here's what we can say. Um, are we allowed to talk about a step? Or can we do step questions? That might be fun. Um, here's what we can say. These terms here, they don't scare us that much because they, they're going to integrate to give us i of y. Um, and these terms don't scare us that much because they're positive. Um, we can say that this is greater than or equal to I of I of cosh x over cosh one plus and then there's a factor of two a out here, but the integral here is interesting to me. It's cosh x f plus shine x f prime dx. Okay, let's put brackets on for consistency. Okay, so we're getting there. If you give me any function y, then I will write it as cosh x over cosh 1 plus some leftover bit um, and then do some manipulation to say, well, I, you know, it's got, involves all this squaring and differentiation. Um, but when you square it, you get kind of familiar stuff. You get things associated with i of, I of cosh x over cosh 1 and you get some uh, positive things, which, hey, we'll leave those. Uh, and there's some cross terms. Hi, Falster version. Um, I've got no idea if you can rewind a live stream on Twitch. Um, I'll remind. I'll, I'll show you what we're doing. Um, we did some playing around with uh, looking for particular functions to try and minimise this expression, uh, which we've been calling i of y, integral of y. It's not just the integral of y though; it's the integral of y squared and y prime squared. Um, and after messing around a bit, um, we found that. Cosh x over cosh 1 did pretty well. Um, that's, in fact, the, the best you can do for this particular problem, which we're proving now. We've plugged in a general thing down here. Oh, there it is. General thing. And yes. Uh, how do we always know that it can be written as a sum of f and our best function? Well, this sort of defines f. Take your new candidate function, which is like maybe some parabola or something. You've been really clever and invented some sort of parabola um, and an x to the 4 term. And you can always write that as cosh x over cosh 1 plus, and now f of x is going to be equal to, and I'm going to be really cheeky, f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx4 minus cosh x over cosh 1. It's kind of true, right? <laughs> and we'll call that f of x. You could do this for anything. Um, so it's kind of, it works because of subtraction being a thing. Yeah, product rule time over here, by the way. Uh, or what do I want? I kind of want to integrate this by parts. Yeah, I kind of want to integrate this by parts, I think. So the inequality is true because the inequality is true because this first bit we recognise as that's just what would happen if there was no f. If there's no f, then we're fine. We just get this thing here. That's cool, chill. Um, the other terms I've kept most of them, so they haven't gone anywhere. Nothing weird's happened. The only ones that I've done anything clever to 
are these ones here, uh, just changing colour. Now these things are greater than or equal to zero. So what I've got is familiar face, weird stuff which I'll keep, but you, you're just adding value, adding um, adding value over here. You're, you're causing this line, this line here, to be really large. So if I get rid of you, term circled in blue, then I'll get something smaller. Uh, no, 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 this is the, this is the good bit. Uh, the stream is slightly in black and white, <laughs> or at least this box is. The blue pen is really weird. Um, it's due to the tablet software that I'm using. That the, don't, yeah, don't, don't stress. <laughs> it's sometimes in blue and it's sometimes not. Um, right, okay, okay. I want to do, I want to do, I want to do the product rule over here. How do we how do we do the product rule? So I guess when you see something like shine x f prime of x dx, what you really want to do is write this as u div v or something, and then say that that's shine x f of x. Oh no, I'm supposed to differentiate. Oh no, oh no 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 u v minus cosh x for the derivative f x for the integral of the other thing d u v dx. Am I going to get away with that? Decorate it with the limits? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we do. Elrude, this, you've correctly spotted that this is the thing that you get if you differentiate the product rule. I'm going to hit it with, I'm going to hit one of the terms with uh, integration by parts, but it's the same thing. Um, you've kind of spotted that this term here is with a minus sign, but is this thing here? It's terms going away. Um, the kind of thing that I hadn't got rid of yet, I'm getting rid of it now, um, because this shows that when you've got these together, you just get the uv term. You've kind of got u dv and v du. So when you integrate, you're just going to get uv. As Elrude said in chat, you're just going to get shine x f of x between one and minus one. But we know that f of 1 is 0, and f of minus 1 is also 0. So when you plug in 1 and minus 1, that's 0. Um, because f, this leftover bit, your kind of extra function um, to pick out this thing for, uh, I can't remember who asked. Um, it's got 1 at the left and 1 at the right. Um, so this means that this thing that this thing overall well, I suppose this thing is just equal to I have cos of cos x over cos one. Isn't that neat? It's kind of too neat. Hello, ha 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 ha. One, two, three. Oh, you've distracted me with your username. One two three three two one six three nine. Do I know that sequence? Is it pay well? Um, yeah, I kind of have two jobs. <laughs> so I do a little bit of university teaching, and I do a lot of administration work. Uh, university's uh, always keen for both of those things. Um, I think I'm paid quite well, well enough that I feel happy spending some of my Sunday just talking about maths, rather than doing a third job. Take that as you will. Um, the paying conditions thing has been. It's not as good as it used to be, and in real terms, it's been in real terms pay cut over the last few years. Um, I'm doing okay. Don't worry about me. Yeah, also I'm a full time live streamer now. <laughs> don't don't want to stress anyone. I've not been fired. This is just my alter. This is my alter ego. This is my alter ego where I don't work at a university at the weekend <laughs> to do this sort of maths. I love this proof. I think it's really tidy. Um, just a no one's being slow, but I am going to do it again. Um, we had a I have y up here. We wrote that we wrote the y as you know, particular function plus f. Um, and then there were lots of kind of consequences of that. There was the terms we were expecting to see, which survived all the way down to the bottom of the page. Um, and there were terms that we kind of didn't really want. We wanted to say, well, look, this thing, this thing you've given me is definitely 
bigger than it would be without all of this junk in here. Some of the terms are just obviously positive. They're making the thing larger. Um, and some of the terms are hilariously cancelled out with each other. So they, they go away. There's some sort of integration by parts product rule thing going on to say that these cross terms that have come out, I think they just go away. It's brilliant. Um, which means that beautifully, gorgeously, this thing is just always larger than this first bit, the familiar bit from before. Um, good, okay. So it says, whatever you try to do to your cosh, so you come with, maybe you, you have this idea of cosh x over cosh 1. Um, you have the idea like that. Um, whatever you try to do to it, if you try to add on some f of x, uh, like you have a new idea which is cosh but wobbly, then that was a bad idea, because adding on f of x gives you, uh, lol, these terms cancel, but it gives you an f squared term and an f prime squared term, which makes it such so much larger. So it's kind of, yeah, it is, it is, it is good. Um, yes, so this is a little bit weird in that part of the magic in here was that, well, it's a good thing we guessed the right function. Um, good thing we get, good thing we knew cosh x over cosh 1 to try that all the way through. Uh, that is kind of where I want to go with this. But first, I want to show you a kind of weird side effect that we had, which is over here when we were testing out functions. Uh, if you've joined us in the last half an hour, we've been testing out other functions earlier today. Um, we saw cosh x over cosh 1 gave us this value down here. Um, and we saw that some random parabola combination thing gave us this value over here, 32 over 21. Um, we've now proven that we didn't, I said they were both about 1.5. The one at the top is about 1.5 and the one at the bottom is about 1.5. So later, we now know that cosh x over cosh 1 is the best. So it must be the case that shine 2 over cosh squared 1 must be better. I think it's better than or equal to, but because of the m squares, I'm just going to claim it. They're not equal to each other. Um, 32 over 21. This simplifies a little bit because uh, now I happen to know that shine of 2 is 2 shine of 1 cosh of 1. Uh, that's like a double angle thing for hyperbolic stuff. Um, which simplifies so beautifully to give us a factor of 2, which cancels. So, tanch of 1 uh, by E is better than pi. Nice to have you with us. Uh, have a good afternoon. Um, so this settles down to tell us that um, tanch of 1 is less than 16 over 21. There's most time. So that was the problem we had before, and I'm going to hard hard code in 5 over 14 as the value we put in. So that's pretty good, that's what we had before. Bit of colour coding quickly. Um, this was our best parabola, it's got to go between these points. Uh, cool, okay. Uh, yeah, no, Ugh, bother. That was our best parabola. And then we found uh, that we could set up cosh x, the kind of new exciting cosh x over cosh 1, which if I spell it right, uh, is this curve, which, oh my goodness, it's like almost the same curve. <laughs> it's so close. Um, oh my goodness, look at that. So the blue curve is the parabola, and then the red curve is the cosh curve that we had. They're so similar, they're so close. Um, and the values that you get out correspond, there's a factor of two, but the values you get out correspond to, on the one hand, the value, uh, the values. Uh, on the one hand, you get something a bit like 16 over 21. And on the other hand, you get tangent one. And look how similar these numbers are down here. 0 0.7619, 0 0.7615, so, tanch 1 really is less than 16 over 21, but 
only in like the fourth decimal place. So we've discovered, as a kind of weird side effect of the maths that we did, we've discovered uh, this weird fact about Tanch 1. It's kind of pretty close to 16 over 21, just a little bit smaller, which is mad. Uh, I guess the reason it's close is that parabola kind of really approximates the Koch curve really well. Like they're, they're, they're not the same, they are different, they cross over somewhere. Um, but look at this, so this is this is the question of, out of all the functions that go from this point to that point, which one minimizes y squared plus y prime squared across the length? Um, and they're so close. Um, choosing the best parabola was a really good choice. Um, we got really close like that. It was a good thing we thought parabolas first. I actually think until you've proved that the um, Koch curve is the best, it's not obvious that the one is. It's not obvious that the one is smaller than sixteen over twenty-one. Yeah. So what does that mean, right? Um, for me, it means something a bit like energy. It's not quite energy, and I want to talk about the general theory a little bit, if that's all right. Um, if you've got to go, I'll, I'll see you around. Um, we've passed three o'clock. I don't know how the timing works for this. Um, uh, there's a class of problems where you might try to solve other things instead. So I need to show you a little bit of how you might solve other problems. Um, otherwise I'm just like, giving you problems and not solutions. Let's go let's look in the proof and I want to point out the bit of the proof um, that really pays off. Uh, ticks. Um, kind of doable. We kind of did something. Um, the proof has got something, it proves something to do with Tash, tash 1, that's it. Um, and there's a link to a cool method. The cool method lets you solve all other problems with this form. It's cool. That's my circles again. Um, the kind of key thing in the middle here is the idea that, well, after we've done the integration by parts on that term, the one that came from the y prime stuff, once we did the integration of parts, and I am thinking about integration by parts, um, rather than, sorry, Elrude, rather than product rule. Um, if I think about it in terms of just integration by parts, which I kind of always do, um, the important thing was that once I differentiated this shine, I got exactly, including the minus sign, I got exactly to cosh again. Um, you can generalize this. Um, it might not always be cosh that you want, because cosh might not always be the answer. Um, but the general theory, which I'll, I'll just show you, um, and then we'll talk about what's going on. The general theory um, to minimize, uh, and then in here, I'm going to put some sort of solve. And then the thing you're supposed to solve is to go by the y minus uh, what do I want uh, minus d by the x d l by d y prime. Now technically these are um, technically these are partial, so it's kind of like just look at the y dependence. And over here, this is just look at the y prime dependence. Okay, pretty pretty bonkers bit of theory. Let me try and break it down. Um, it's trying to it's trying to explain what to do for a big class of problems where you've got something in here which for us was y squared plus y y prime squared, which is kind of nice. Um, and the thing that we're supposed to do is to differentiate it with respect to y. So differentiate this with respect to y. Treating y prime, like ignore the y primes for a bit, uh, but differentiate with respect to y, that will give us 2y over here. And over here, differentiate this bit with respect to y prime. We're well, supposed to differentiate everything with respect to y prime, keeping y, ignore the y stuff, just differentiate with respect to y prime. This is kind of like pulling apart the dependence, which bits of which bits of l depend on y and which bits depend on y prime. You can't say the first bit and the second bit because they might be written in the other order. So you have to do this kind of like differentiation to detect which bits. Anyway, never mind. Um, um, and this is a differential equation you can solve using A-level maths, um, which is that 
it's a different equation with the constant coefficients, which gives you sort of caution shine. Uh, and then you then you maybe remember that you're trying to solve something with y of one is one, one of y of minus one is one. So the kind of general method that you learn at university, it is a Lagrangian, um, the general method that you learn at university is you, you would see this integral like this with the boundary conditions, with the extra information like this. And you would apply this thing to get turn it into a differential equation and then just solve the differential equation. Um, and just to break it down once more, just to compare this, so this is called the Euler-Lagrange equation. The reason it works to compare it up here, the reason this is a good idea, is because if you're trying to run back a version of this proof, you don't actually write out the proof for other problems, but if you, were, if you had to work out a version of this proof, then what you would do is you would have your kind of solution you're very proud of that just follows through here and it would be the value of the integra integral at your solution um, you would get some cross term from the squaring or whatever or in general in general that's like a kind of next order correction it's the first thing to do with f um, in the general theory we're imagining that f is a kind of small correction to look nearby, like how um, when you're minimizing a function, you look nearby at the derivative. Um, that's kind of what we're doing. We're differentiating kind of with respect to f, but let's not worry about that too much. Um, so the, the idea being that you get you, you generally get these bits, which if your function is complicated, the thing that you've got inside the integral, if it's complicated, depends on y and y prime in complicated ways, then this stuff will also be complicated. But the thing you always want is to be able to do integration by parts to just shove stuff over. And you want after you've done the integration by parts, of course, that introduces an extra derivative on here. So this is this shine x is playing the role of I don't know what shine x is doing, but the, <laughs> the shine x plays the role of like the derivative of something to do with your solution. Um, so you want to make sure that it's all set up neatly so that with the minus sign and the, the um, d by dx. So when I look at this, um, this is supposed to be in general finding the de dependence on y. This is finding the dependence on y prime. These factors of two here are the, the factors of two that we had above when we did the multiplying out the square. And the minus d by dx is just integration by parts. Um, we want this to be zero so the term goes away. Um, and there's a more complicated reason in the general theory why you could ignore other terms. Uh, we ignored this f squared and f prime squared, which somebody called me out on in chat as like a an interesting point to to uh to uh interesting point to get to, to where I crossed out some terms. Um, the general theory's got a more complicated reason for why you might get away with that, um, to do with differentiating in the direction of f. But uh, it's chill stream, so we're not gonna do the details. Um, also technically I should tidy it up a tiny bit. Should tidy up a tidy up a little bit, um, just because I wanna don't wanna scare you too much, but so these should technically be written like this. Now, that doesn't mean anything unless you know about partial differentiation. Um, uh, but technically, next time you see this in your life, if you do a maths degree or something, or a theoretical physics degree, um, next time you see this in your life, it'll have these kind of weird curly Ds. And by that point, by that point, you'll know what those mean. And you'll also know what, what on earth this means, right? Um, for today, this just means differentiate it with respect to y, keeping y prime fixed. Imagine that y prime is just, just ignore them. Um, partial derivatives, I still pronounce as, what do I say actually? I think I say partial derivative of L with respect to y, which is a mouthful. Much longer partial derivative of L with respect to y. Yeah, rubbish. Um, let's do another example. So let's minimize y to the 4 plus y prime to the 4 dx. So I just put an extra penalty on. Instead of squaring, this function is really angry. Um, it saw you trying to do some value and some derivative. I would really like you not to. Um, is this going to turn out to be the same thing? No. Okay, so Euler Lagrange. Euler Lagrange says to solve, so we just want to solve. Uh, d by dy 
Oh, I say dbdy y sometimes. Um, partial derivative, derivative with respect to y is just this, because I'm ignoring the y primes. Um, and the partial derivative with respect to x with respect to y prime goes in here. Now this looks quite hard <laughs> because I'm supposed to differentiate this again over here. Look, so when I do this derivative, my differential equation, I'm going to remove the fours. So you're not guaranteed to get a simple differential equation. Uh, oh my goodness, I had to use the chain rule there. Did not enjoy that. Yeah, so now I've got a real pain to solve something like this, eh? Serves me right, I think. Uh, yeah, you might have to get inventive about how you actually can solve these things. I reckon I can solve this. Just going to stare at it for a second until I've solved it. Cool. In reality, maybe I give that to a computer or something to go and solve. It's now a boundary value problem or something. Oh, I'm supposed to give you some subject to. And there's loads of physics problems you can do like this as well, where you turn the minimization of an integral into a differential equation. In fact, it's how modern physics works. Um, there's a version of this where you, you have something you're trying to mi minimize, and you can kind of always turn it back into a differential equation if you want to. So uh, for differential equations in physics, I'm thinking of like f equals ma, um, things, things like f equals ma. There's an integral version of that where you can re-express the, the thing you're trying to do as minimization of a quantity called action, but, but let's not worry about the physics too much. Um, you can package it up as an integral. Um, package it up as an integral so that if you ever want to actually try and do something with it, maybe you bring in Euler Lagrange and you try and solve it and turn it back into a differential equation like F equals MA. I've got a bit of physics, haven't I? <laughs> Oh well, especially chill maths. It says maths on there. Yeah, good. Okay, I was trying to work out if I could just like uh, divide both sides by y prime, call it a day. I'm not sure I can. Sometimes you can, right? Uh, yeah, what's this giving me? It's giving me vibes of both sides looking like derivatives, but they're not. Uh, divide by y cubed? Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> what have I done? Yeah, rubbish. I'm not sure what I was hoping for. Good thing I put squares in in the first one. <laughs> Chill maths. Absolute zero. That'd be good name for a stream. Can we call it absolute zero? Cool. Uh, standard computation time exceeded. Are you trying to solve my difference equation here? Oops, sorry. Let's try and do the brachistochone. brachistochone. Uh, so there's a hanging chain problem, but it's kind of the same. So. So the, the famous one is the um, Brachistochrome problem. I'll try and describe it first. Um, and maybe that'll be where I stop as well. Um, the Brachistochrome problem is like this. Um, you're in charge of building a roller coaster. And the roller coaster is just going to roll from this point up here down and it's going to finish here. It's where the, the camera takes a photo or something. Brilliant, had a wonderful time. Um, you would like to minimize the time it takes to get there. So your first plan might be to do a straight line. And you would like to minimize time taken for your function y of x. You then realize that going down might be good because you could go down so that they're falling and picking up lots of speed and then rushing along, along the side. Um, and that's something you're allowed to do, I guess. Um, the best one, I think, goes down and then back up again. Uh, this is called the Brachistochrone problem. Now, maybe you can see that the time taken is something to do with 
is something to do with y, and it depends on all the values of y because you know, probably going to have to work out some sort of something like how fast you're progressing along the roller coaster, um, where you're going. So it's a tricky problem in a way, uh, but um, what you end up trying to minimize is, oh my goodness, people did this with lots of different methods, trying to, yeah, this is all right, isn't it? Yeah, sorry, just checking. I should have looked this up before I went live, but you know, learning as a go. There is a physicist among us. Uh, the conversion goes, and you'll hate this if you don't like physics, I suppose, but the conversion to turn this physics problem into a maths problem, the conversion is something like, work out here, at a general point, at this point, what is the what is the energy? What is the velocity? And what's the explicity? How fast are we going forwards? Because we might just be falling. And then what you want is the total time is the integral of dt dx over x. As we go from like 0 to 1 or something. Um, Sort of, it's that weird way that the total time taken is like the, the sum of all your slowness, the time it took you to do each bit of X along the track. Your, your roller coaster might be going up and down and stuff, but really I'm just waiting for you to get from 0 to 1. Um, and yeah, we can probably do that. I'm starting to think I can do this. I'm going some. Going some. Going somewhere with this? Yeah, I'm going to have a go. Uh, so. If we start it, I'm going to go for the easiest numbers I can think of. 1, and I'm going to set g to be 1, because I can't be bothered to put g's everywhere. And I'm going to set m to be 1, although I doubt it matters. Uh, okay, so then the energy at some point down here is going to be... I'm going to set, measure my h from here as well. Does that work? Can't remember, not sure. No, it feels bad, because I wanted to have. Mm, anyway. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so it's. Okay, so original gravitational potential energy, um, mty, half mp squared for velocity, maths. chat talking about their choices. We're doing physics versus philosophy. Oxford will let you study a course called physics. And what am I saying? I don't have to advertise Oxford courses right now. You would have found out about Oxford courses by now. The UCAS deadline is like tomorrow, which is a good reason not to talk about it. Can't be bothered to have a V. So V for just velocity. It's not that bad. It's like root 1 minus y. With a factor of two. Do I have to care about the two? Sort of. So then uh, the horizontal velocity. You're on a slope here. You've got some velocity that goes down, but it's only the component which is like. Oh gosh. I'm f so. There's nothing makes me feel old like trying to do maths faster. <laughs> Like one over. There's a factor of one over one plus y prime squared. Cool, groovy, having a wonderful time. So then, the t by dx is something like one plus y prime squared over root one plus y squared, or well, minus y. Factor of root two. So you can turn it into an integral. Not certain I've got my integral correct. Factors of minus signs and one overs at your your discretion. I got somewhere. I did some maths. I mumbled a lot to myself while you all talked about this. <laughs> I'm doing the thing. <laughs> I got down to this. Good. And then you would throw Euler Lagrange at it, and you would differentiate it with respect to y and with respect to y prime, and you would solve a differential equation to work out the the shape. Which sounds like a lot of work, but trust me, it's better than trying all possible functions on the way between. 
Um, so good. We have got that. Got that down into a format that I kind of respect. It's then tough because then differentiating it, you've got to do some other things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I, I'm currently in my alter ego where I don't, I don't know about, I don't know about CS. What have I got? I've got like maths. Oh, that's a Russian laugh. Okay. I think I can now tick the other thing. I haven't done anything good with it because I turned one problem into a black on a differential equation, and the other problem I just got as far as turning it into an integral, and then. Try to convince you I could later go Blair. Um, that's what counts as success around here. Um, but I am going to go and tick the thing. There's a cool general method that works on this. Maybe I should have stopped at the 16 over 21, right? Became less chill after that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, I think I should have stopped here. If this turns into a kind of... We're not at work right now, but if I'm using this for maths club, we're stopping here. I'm not trying to do the general theory. Right, I think I'm going to show you a graph thing that I'm interested in. I think, yeah, I think I'm going to... Ah, the proof is kind of good. The proof, okay, so Maths Club, OOMC maybe. OOMC, no. Do not, for Maths Club, do not try and do this. It's got partial derivatives in, and I haven't found a cool second example to make it look worth, like it's worth doing. Yeah, cool. Cool and exclusive. And it took like an hour and a half as well. Okay, good to know. Thanks for letting me practice some content. Um, ages ago uh, on Math Club, I showed some people this, which I want to revisit quickly um, to give you something to think about, I guess. Um, the idea is uh, <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> Hi, that's Nash. Um, the idea behind this graph theory thing that I've been thinking about on and off is you did this kind of slightly cool thing where you have a you have counters on a square grid and the rule is that they have to have either one or three neighbours. Um, I think this is inspired a little bit by um, a like game of life sort of stuff about number of neighbours and also like Reminds me a bit of Go, but I don't know how Go works, so don't at me. Or if you've got any good ways to learn how Go works, then let me know and I'll go and learn how Go works. Um, but you can build these kind of slightly larger structures as well. So these ones I've just drawn on the edge have each got one neighbour, that's fine. Um, but I said one or three. Um, so you can do things like this, where the one in the middle is happy because it's got three neighbours and these ones have got one. Um, yeah, there was a weird snake. It was on Maths Club briefly. Um, I tried to get Maths Club to people to, to look at it, but people weren't that interested, I think. Um, the thing that gets me interested is that you can build these kind of longer longer chains that remind me a lot of chemistry A-level. Um, and... Um, Oh, Elry's teaching me go. Yes, brilliant. Carry on. <laughs> you get these longer chains which remind me of chemistry. And then I've been trying to think about ways to fit them, pack them together. So here I've got like this one. These are all neighbours. Um, and I've got these ones with some neighbours. Diagonals don't count. Um, so one or three neighbours. Uh, diagonals don't count. And I guess the exercise that's now a question um, is something like, can you make a loop? Uh, 
Um, so this would be like some pattern that has, has an inside and an outside. Um, inside and an outside. Um, this doesn't work because all of these have got two neighbors. So these are all unhappy. They've got exactly two and they're supposed to have one or three. But maybe you could kind of decorate this like adding on some extra neighbors. You've got to add on quite a few extra neighbors though and it's kind of consequences because now this one is happy. This one's happy. This one's on the happy. So I've got to work on this one. Um, so it's kind of quite hard to see how you could decorate this going around. Uh, someone sent me in a solution, so I'm pretty sure it's possible. Oh, am I doing it now? Is it working? Can I just go around like this? Wait, hang on, have I solved my own problem live? That'd be quite exciting. Oh no, I haven't because I haven't made these ones happy. So I think I'll leave you with that as a kind of challenge. I've had a go and I'm making something with like the English Heritage logo. Um, Elrude's theory is no. Um, someone sent me something, I didn't check it very closely. <laughs> so I might have had mistakes in. But a question that either I asked and I forgot about it or they remembered and like, maybe I did ask them to do it or maybe they invented it and they sent me that. That was you, that was Mountain Ash. That's why you're in here now. Right, Mountain Ash, hi. <laughs> There's only like six people in the world, right? That was you, right, okay, you sent me in this. Mash is going to tell us how to do this, and we're gonna look closely at Mash's solution. Um, Mash, without searching through my old emails and stuff, you reckon this is possible, right? I've got, I've got a way on the screen that's not possible, but just to check, yeah, yeah, mouse and asterisk is possible. That's kind of good enough for me right now, to be honest. Right, if, I think if there's one way, there should probably be lots of ways, because I kind of know how to turn, it depends how complicated your kind of sides are, but you should be able to like stretch it somehow. If there's one way. So our is unhappy. Our intuition was no. And now people in chat are talking about yes claiming to have a solution, but this live stream is not big enough to contain it. It's very annoying. Okay. Um, I didn't know Mountain Ash was going to be here. I was going to try and work it out. It's really thrown the... I, I'd forgotten what was in Mountain Ash's thing. It, it is difficult to draw in chat. Oh yeah, I did some physicists speak there about expanding it, but who knows, right? Impossible. Finding a second solution, I think, would still be this. No, I can't, no, no, no. I did a five day live stream where I exclusively wrote in margins. Um, I don't want to know how many times I referenced the idea of a margin not being big enough because it's like 40 hours of content and it's only writing in margins. Yeah, anyway, good, okay. Um, I'm going to leave this homework. Before Mountain Ash works out how to put, put it in chat, let's not put it in chat. <laughs> the worst thing would be Mountain Ash put something in chat, it's not quite right, and then it just sets off a, sets off a war um, in chat. I'm going to leave you to do that as a kind of homework, because I think I'm also going to wrap up in a second. Uh, let me understand how Twitch works. I think this was some good stuff. We had some viewers, we had some chat, we did some maths. We did one of my favourite problems. So to be, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm honest, if I'm sometimes honest. This fact is, I think mine. I'm signing it. Um, I think that's mine. I haven't seen it anywhere else. If you find it on the internet somewhere else, maybe don't tell me. Um, I'm very pleased with it. I think it's very good. Um, right, will we do another one of these? Uh, not before Thursday, uh, but I've put it in put it in as a regular thing. We'll see if I do it again next week. Uh, do it more often. Uh, Elrude saw a Lagrangian. It doesn't matter. I, I made sure, look, Elrude, for your, for your note, I made sure to do like, 
like half an hour of here's a maths problem that we're exploring. Okay, it turns out to be how all, all of modern physics works, but it only came in right at the end. We, managed to, we had a good play with it. We had a good, like, exploring. We almost... Yeah, I think this is true. I think we could say... We kind of did the problem the hard way. We kind of did the problem the hard way, where you identify the minimum by just trying lots of stuff, and then come up with a proof for it to be the minimum, which is what this is. Um, that's doing the problem the hard way. If you do maths at university, you'll learn like some general theory, which is very hard to appreciate. It's very hard to appreciate how cool the general theory is, unless you've at some point done the problem the hard way. Right. Good. Uh, <laughs> you want a D and D stream with math themed? So would I get other? Would I get other mathematicians on? We'd get a band of mathematicians together, and we'd do D and D. I think I think Simon Clark does something like that. Did chat know about Simon Clark? I love that I was saying in Star T. That was really funny. Who's Simon Clark? <gasps> to the internet. Wait, let's find out if Simon Clark is live and do some sort of raid. Uh, Simon is a YouTuber who also does Twitch streams. Oh, everyone's like sad about sad about that. Okay, okay. Um, let's point at Simon Clark. Um, Simon is a YouTuber. There he is. Um, he has some content from back when he was a PhD student um, about physics. I <laughs> know we're back on physics. Um, but he also does live streams about. Uh, Warhammer, and uh, so this is his favourite stuff about atmospheric science and simulation. A lot of stuff on uh, climate change, um, some interviews with other people doing PhDs, the galactic sausage, um, some stuff about Star Wars, some stuff about Pi, you know, that sort of thing. Um, he also does some live streams talking about um, maths, sometimes A-level revision and just doing maths papers and things. Uh, I met Simon Clark just before the pandemic, said something like, I'm considering doing some live streaming, and Simon said a lot of useful things to me, one of which was you've got to have Twitch chat on the screen. So if you're in Twitch chat right now, that's why that guy told me to. <laughs> Did I show you? Did I cut? I did cut over to show you Simon Clark. There we go. Um, I couldn't find a stream just now, but I will try and let's try once more. It would be so funny to. Are you even allowed to raid somebody if you don't have any? Okay, he streamed a, a, a he streamed a while ago, playing some video games. I'm going to point you to Simon Clark. I can't raid because he's not live. Um, good. Okay. Uh, Elroot has seen him. Oh, people have people have worked it out. Yeah, if if we don't get into Oxford, then Oxford didn't deserve us anyway. If we don't get into Oxford, then well, I guess we're going to study maths and whatever somewhere else, and they'll be lucky to have us. I'm now talking as if I'm applying. I'm exploring this kind of alter ego person where instead of being the admissions coordinator for maths, maybe I'm an applicant, maybe I'm chill. Stay live, stay live until he is. He was last live 19 days ago, which is even longer than me. So <laughs> we'll see. Cool. Uh, I think I'm going to go and do some weekend. How far am I from? Yeah, hang on. Okay, so I'm not part, I'm not going for partner. I'm going for, I'm going for affiliate, which I think, I think I might be able to do. Might be able to do. Oh, it's like people, the, the hard one is people chatting at the same time, which is really hard to like engage. Um, we'll find out. I think I need, I think I need a, a more, more call to action engagement kind of live stream. If I'm going to hit affiliate, we will see. <laughs> oh, why am I trying to do Twitch? It's such a weird place to try and do maths. We'll find out. Okay. Anything else I want to know? Uh, yeah, cool. Um, quick summary. What have we learned? 
we've learned a thing about Tench. We've learned something about graphs. Thanks, Mountain Ash. Um, we have not talked about Matt too much. It does have low latency. Yeah, yeah. we've learned that Twitch maths kind of works. Um, and it is possible to talk to people about Lagrangians over the internet live on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, you do get a lot of dialogue. Hmm. Latency. Yeah, I've often felt that the, the YouTube Slido combo, YouTube is super, like, it's kind of slow on the processing. Um, uh, there are some settings I can fiddle with, but I'm on, I'm already on not terrible settings to, on the YouTube streaming. So yeah, it's quite nice having Twitch chat. And Twitch chat actually shows up on screen, I think, at roughly about the time that you put it in Twitch. Like, the, that's kind of artificial because it's grabbing it from, it's grabbing it from Twitch doing some formatting and then showing it back to you over my internet connection twice. So, and it's not, it's not that bad, I think. If you type something to see it, it obviously appears in Twitch first and then gets captured, sent to me, formatted, bundled and shown back to you. But yeah, that gives you the, the loop. Every says like two to three seconds, which is not bad considering it's going, it's been quite a round trip to actually appear up there. And I see it halfway in between. <laughs> So this is like a one or one and a half second, maybe. Oh, this is like the thing where you test the post system. People know this. You want to find out the um. You want to find out how fast the post system is. Um, so you send your friend a letter to find out how fast the post system is, um, and they are obviously like happy to receive it. Um, and then they write back to you and say, "I got that on like Thursday or something." This is terribly inefficient or something. Um, what you can do instead is send them a kind of letter that contains a letter and tell them to just immediately unwrap it and send it back. Um, and then they send it back, so they send back just the kind of small letter on the inside. Um, and that gives you a sort of idea about how fast this is going. So then you, you like divide by two for speed of mail. Um, which is like not a bad idea, right? You send it, it comes back. Um, yeah, you get your own letter back. So <laughs> fair enough. Um, I guess this is this is what's called include a stamped addressed envelope, which is what it always said on TV competitions when I was a child. There would be like a thing on TV if you would like a sort of toy off the back of a cereal packet or something, then you need to send a stamped addressed envelope. To, anyway. Um, uh, two problems with this. Uh, one, one is crime. Uh, I think you can use this to do crime. Please don't use this to do crime. In that, if you want to send a letter and have it appear to come from somewhere else, you could you could send your letter outside and say, "Oh, I'm just testing the speed of the post. Please, could you send this back to my address, which I promise is my address on the inside." And then they send it, but secretly it's gone somewhere else. Whoa. Ooh. Um, so this is my sort of crime method for sending this to them without getting the right postmark on it for where it's come from. So I think you can do crime like this. All my viewers have gone up now in talking about crime. Um, uh, yeah. There's another problem, which is the kind of latency involved in actually the transaction over here. Which I tried to mention, I suppose. Uh, there's an experiment that people tried uh, several hundred years ago, I can't remember when, and this is live, um, where they tried to work out the speed of light by shining a torch. What do torches look like? There we go. It's got a button. It's huge. It's a massive... We've bought the biggest torch we could find. Um, and this guy's also got a torch. Um, and he's going to wait until he sees the light... Turn on torch. So, I will turn on this light first. We're standing on separate hills that are very, very far apart. And the idea is, I'll turn on my torch, and then when you see it, you turn on your torch, and then when I see that, I'll write down how much time has gone by, and that'll tell me the speed of light. Uh, this is pretty pro problematic. Um, because you end up just measuring your reaction times. So turns out light is super fast. So this is quite a good idea if you didn't realize that light is incredibly fast. 
Um, it's good for post. It kind of works just about for post, modulo crime. Um, it kind of doesn't work that well for light. Um, and what we're doing here is the same thing, but for Twitch messages. Um, you can see them coming back to you because you post them on Twitch. Uh, they get sent across the internet to, for some reason, my channel. Um, my computer at home. Thanks for the sub. Um, <laughs> and then over there, uh, back to back to back to you. So you get to see kind of double, but up to some kind of latency. And it's not obvious to me whether Twitch messages are more like letters or more like photons. Lag. Uh, the experiment did not really work because light is too fast. Uh, somebody just subscribed. Let me just say thank you quickly. Uh, Kimchi pause yes. That's just sort of yeah, normal. Sentence. I'm gonna call you kimchi. Thanks for the sub thanks for the follow. Yes, you can follow, but you can't sub until I'm an affiliate. That's the thing. One, two, three, four. Oh, I think there's still four people in chat. <laughs> I think it's four people. If it's five people, I think I get to let you sub. You don't want to sub. Right, good. Okay. We've done it. We've done it. I've suddenly Yeah, you've just joined, just as we're wrapping things up. Uh I kind of ran out of content. <laughs> Maybe a chill stream means I don't need content. Kimchi, just for you. You've 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 followed at just the right moment for a very good integral. Let me try and find it really quickly. Yeah, that's too. I, I did earlier my favourite kind of integral, which proved a thing about tanch. Um, I want to give you a different integral. I haven't decided if this is homework or not. I might need to go and do some weekend stuff. But hey, um, here's how the integral works. Oh, it's the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 4, 1 minus x to the 4 over 1 plus x squared. dx. Okay. Um, this is a very good integral. integral. Um, uh, this is a very good integral because... Well, I mean, it looks like a hot, right pain, um, but it turns out to have some incredible kind of side effect. Um, I've got a strategy for these. When you've got a polynomial divided by one plus x squared, um, which is just kind of multiply out the polynomial, do some sort of polynomial division. So you can do this sort of thing. You can do this sort of thing because you'll do some sort of division. If it's x cubed or something, you'll start trying to divide x cubed uh, by 1 plus x squared or something. And there's some sort of polynomial division thing you can do where you get like an x, but then you want to subtract an x. So you need to, oh my goodness, you need to write down like a minus, oh my goodness, the remainder. Oh, okay. there's like remainders involved and stuff. You do some non division and it's horrible. We do some polynomial division. The sort that I'm a big fan of now for um, Galois theory reasons. Anyway, my plan is that if you're dividing by 1 plus x squared, then this will give you, uh, you want to integrate q of x. That's not too bad. That's polynomial. You want to integrate x over 1 plus x squared. That's kind of bad until you remember that that's something to do with log of 1 plus x squared. Um, and you want to integrate 1 over 1 plus x squared. And that's kind of not too bad at all because you remember that that is something to do with arctan. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Elrude is off and away with the Euclidean domain facts. Okay, okay, okay. So the only thing that's missing is like some sort of motivation. So I need to give you a part two of the question, right? Which is part one, two, part two. Deduce a fact about a famous irrational number. Which is a kind of cryptic second part. So there's the integral. There's the question, the motivation of why we might want to do this integral. And here's a strategy for how to do it. That is kind of no fun <laughs> because <laughs> the strategy involves a lot of polynomial division. Uh, oh gosh, uh, Elrude not telling me things about polynomials. <laughs> I think it's alright, right? The thing up here is just a polynomial of degree like 8 or something. That's not even that bad. I think I'm going to write it out to try and further motivate people to show that it's possible. 
this is good and there's, there's a non-zero chance that I'll just hang around and do the interval you know in which case nobody at home has to do it yeah you get kind of this sort of thing upstairs which you can start writing out as like so x to the 8 makes me think of x squared plus 1 times x to the 6 so I'll sort of take one of the x to the 6 x to the 6 is that can be involved in there as well and that will leave me with some not quite remainder because there's still really high degree going on over here I'm writing them out in the other order as well um, but oh my goodness um, okay so I've taken one of the x to the 6's and one of the x to the 8's to say that bit is a multiple of x squared plus 1 which is pretty good if I'm planning to divide by x squared plus 1 then I'll say aha you can get away with just integrating x to the 6 over here uh, what else have you got um, I guess we could do something with these x to the 5's and x to the 7's uh, so we could bundle those together oh they're quite nice actually they just work together uh, and then there's some more work to do with here <laughs> that involves bringing in loads more terms um, so we're gonna have to keep ro keep rolling keep rolling 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 to keep doing this keep keep going to do this division down <laughs> hi Anders okay um, we're in Gower groups Yes, and this is fine, right? This is a reducible polynomial. This is an irreducible polynomial. We're doing some qu we're quotienting by the irreducible polynomial to get. This will be isomorphic to C as a as a Galois group. Um, people in the chat they are going for previous stream stuff. <laughs> um, to give you a clue about the famous irrational number part, so I'm giving up on my polynomial division here. I've decided that is homework, and I'm stopping at four. Um, to give you a clue, this term down here. I guess you've got an A here and a B here after you've done all your division. Uh, this thing, tan inverse tan, from 0 to 1, is going to give us pi over 4. Um, the other terms are going to involve like log 2 or something. Um, so maybe this tells us about pi to the 4 versus like log 2 and fractions something to do with those yeah we didn't go our references but only only in a kind of cheeky way not in a very chill way to be honest um, yeah I guess we're not in the splitting field because I'm doing this in a real way oh you want to do it with complex numbers I get it now sorry I'm up to speed with chat Chat wants me to do this integral using complex numbers or something, and possibly, I imagine you probably want to use. Oh yeah, you can do some sort of partial fraction stuff on it, right? You can do some partial fraction stuff if you really want to. Um, the partial fractions make it less clear how the pi comes into it. Hi, Gibby. So you've just stopped. Uh, I... This is the second kind of project I've done on Twitch. Chill Sundays. Um, it's supposed to be chill. In contrast to uh, some streams I did a couple of weeks ago where I just talked about Galois theory for like 40 hours. It was a whole thing. Um, it was pretty weird. Uh, that was, yeah, pre-reading. You did it naturally as well. <laughs> Good job, Toast Potatoes. There is a reader among us. Would have been even better. Uh, sorry to put the person's table. Good. Okay. Really pausing on my A. Oh, it's sort of the stream where I kind of just do the maths, right? Like, I kind of feel like I should just keep going. There's about five, five more steps. I've got five minutes and five steps. How bad can it be? And then you integrate. Can someone see? Can you tell me what I'm integrating? Tell me a fact about this integral, please. The sort of thing that we're going to get out. You don't tell me anything, if you like. Not to do with complex numbers. Don't tell me about complex numbers. So that would give me minus 5x minus 5. Uh, so I need get minus 5x. Oh uh, no, because I've got one, so minus 4x to the 4, I think. So I'm going to go minus 4x squared. 
Yeah, probably. Maybe I should get Warframe to do this division for me. <laughs> I'm really going to end up making mistakes, right? Plus, and then four, or something. Minus four. Yeah, something like that. Quick look at Alpha, alpha while I read chat. Oh, hi, Jay. John, Dave, Bob, Tim. Wait, is that four people all on one account? Hi, John and Dave and Bob and Tim. Look, Twitch, that counts as four viewers, right? That counts as four viewers. John, Dave, Bob and Tim think that non euclidean cleaning geometry is cool. Yes. Also quite hard to draw. I'm going to use uh, Wolfram Alpha cheekily on, on a separate, separate tab to check my multiplication. Which I'm not very confident with, but you know, it's chill maths. So, so that should multiply out to be. Oh gosh, has that multiplied out to be the thing I wanted it to be? Yeah, it looks good. Cool, okay, so I've got no x term. So, updated idea, nothing to do with log 2. This might be a fact about pi over 4. Uh, chat's getting there. <laughs> just getting there. <laughs> For people who have, people who have just joined, um, this is kind of a sub goal where uh, I get to switch on Twitch affiliate affiliate if we get enough like engagement with the concept of maths. Uh, so goodness, and just keep doing integrals until until Twitch accepts that. Um, I think they have to. It's like getting Twitch to notice that maths is happening. It feels really funny. Yeah, Manticore. Welcome to welcome to this chat. This is how you get chat engagement. Something to do with pi and something to do with twenty-two over seven. Yeah. So the thing we're going to do is we're going to integrate this polynomial. So this is me messing around with the thing upstairs. It's all divided by x squared plus one. So we're going to get two terms in here. There's this term, and there's this term, which has got a four in it. Uh, so this term over here, look, is minus four over x squared plus one. Which will give us because like it's just minus four times this stuff. It's going to give minus pi on the end. So that's pretty good. Manticore in chat says that there's a twenty-two over seven. It's a lot of sevens. Let's go. So if we integrate this thing from naught to one, five x to the four minus four x squared plus four, we get one over seven minus one. Uh, 4 over 6, sorry, uh, plus 1 minus 4 thirds plus 4, which, hmm, gosh, we're going to try and simplify that. That's 2 thirds, uh, 2 thirds and 6, th six thirds, so that's minus 2. So we've got 5 take away 2 is 3, which gives us 3 and a seventh. So final answer, the integral is equal to... Let's go back up actually. Let's put it up here. The integral is equal to. Wait, what's 3 and a 7? That's 22 over 7, right? 22 over 7 minus pi. Tell me something about the integral. I mean, we now know it's 22 over 7 minus pi. It's kind of quite small. Um, we need one more observation about the integral to be done. Elrude is explaining multiplication groups. Yeah, and also answering my question. Thanks, Elrude. Who needs five people in chat when you've got... <laughs> yeah, 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 the thing's positive. A bunch of squares, right? A bunch of squares. And the positive positive denominator. This is totally positive. So 22 over 7 is a little bit bigger than pi. Um, I'm saying a little bit because this integral is super small. <laughs> um, look, all these functions have been raised to the 4 upstairs and then divided by stuff. So it's sort of tiny. L rude. Oh yeah, L rude. It was you. I had to work out if it was an L or an I. Good. Right. <laughs> it's actually very L rude to pronounce somebody's name wrong in chat. <laughs> it's actually not enough. Oh no, we're going Larude. Oh, sorry. No, yeah, okay, you see. 
put an extra vowel on. I'm also wrong. We got there, chat. <laughs> okay, live stream summary. We have done an integral, more or less. I kind of did. I went quite fast here. We've proved that twenty-two over seven is slightly bigger than pi. Yeah, let's do it. Kind of do evaluation. Evaluate. Evaluate our success. Um, today, sixteen over twenty-one is slightly larger than tan of one. 22 over 7 is slightly larger than pi. Um, we've seen some sort of theory for integrals involving y and y prime squared. Um, and we played a little bit with uh, loops. Oh, that's a homework thing. I would say that that is enough for one afternoon. Um, thanks for watching. I think I'm going to call it there. Kimchi, that was mostly for you because I was about to leave and then gave me a follow, so we did the thing with Pi. <laughs> it's a keyboard spam, right, okay. Uh, take care, chat. Uh, I, because I'm at home, I've got, I've got a button that switches off the stream, so I'm not stressed and panicked. This is chill. The reason it's chill is because I've got a little stream deck that I know will see me out on the way out. It's not tested. Uh, best of luck with any like scary maths exams we've all got this week. Um, I think I'm doing this again next week. We'll find out. We'll find out. We do need another thing to replace the quest, right? We need another. We need a like long stream quest. The chills, chills, nice, but I'm going to burn through content really fast unless we make things more chill. Like this was kind of chill. Unless we make things more chill, or I pick up another learning objective. Certain maths tests. Good weekend, everyone. Take care. Bye. Ah, oh, it didn't work at all. <laughs> it's the point of setting up a button if it doesn't doesn't do the thing. Goodbye chat. Take care.